Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast with Dr. Stylianos Kabakis. Dr. Kabakis is a data scientist, statistician, and blockchain expert with a mission to educate the public about the wonderful capabilities of technologies like AI, data science, and DLTs. These technologies have the potential to transform the world, the economy, and our lives. However, there is too much misinformation around tech, and so most people are just confused about what is true and what is not. Whether you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or just an enthusiast, the Data Scientist Podcast helps you separate reality from hype. Hi, everyone. On this podcast, I'd like to discuss about McKinsey's report called The State of AI in 2020. So this is a McKinsey Global Survey on Artificial Intelligence. And uh, McKinsey's report in general, I find them very, very good. And it's a way to understand where the market's heading. And there are some very interesting findings around AI adoption and how big organizations are using AI. And uh, so what the McKinsey's global survey is suggesting for organizations that are using AI is that it looks like most organizations are using are using it as a way to generate revenues. So it looks like that the, the respondents of the survey said that from this, the respondents came from a variety of industries. They said that they attribute 20% or more of the organization's earnings before interest in taxes, EBIT, which is a, a very well-known metric in the corporate world. They attribute these to artificial intelligence. And these companies, they're planning to invest even more on, in AI as a response to the COVID pandemic, as they realize that AI can be a key differentiator in the battle against the competition. And uh, at least 50% of the respondents of this survey, they said that they have adopted artificial intelligence in at least one business function. And it looks like the most popular function by a large margin is product and service development. So this is by far the most popular one. And then followed by service operations and then marketing and sales. This comes as no surprise since this can be some of the key functions for a company, but also functions that generate lots of data. And so it should be relatively straightforward to see how to apply artificial intelligence in the science in those cases. Something else which has come out of the report and is very, very interesting is that it looks like companies have focused more on using AI for increasing revenues rather than decreasing costs. That's not to say that AI cannot be used to decreasing costs. It's just that companies, at least for last year, they focused more on growth rather than reducing costs through the use of AI. And that's interesting, an interesting trend, but we might see this shifting in the future because AI can be used for both types of challenges, can be used to both increase revenue, but also to reduce cost. Something else that came out of this research is that uh, deep learning is being adopted more and more. It looks like uh, 16% of the respondents have taken deep learning beyond the piloting stage. This is not a very high percentage, but it's higher than it used to be. And something very interesting is that high tech and telecom companies are leading the charge with 30% of the respondents from those sectors saying that their companies have embedded deep learning capabilities. No surprise, high tech companies or telecom companies are some of the, the, the companies that are the most used to working with cutting edge technologies and they have the right processes to embed these technologies in the workflow. So it's no surprise that we see them using AI and deep learning. Some other interesting findings is that respondents and AI high performance, that is companies that have seen 20% or more growth as the result of the use of AI, they said that they were more than twice, actually 2.3 times more likely than others to say that the C-suite leaders are very effective. So it's clear that being able as a leader to understand AI, to use AI, it's, it's clear that not only this helps set your company 
ahead of the competition, but also your employees will see you under a different light. And it's clear that the leaders who take action in terms of adopting technologies like AI and blockchain are clearly very forward looking. This is one of the reasons that through my work, I have promoted the use of AI at the C-suite and I've helped many, many leaders understand how they can use and implement AI in machine learning. If you want to know more about this, feel free to check out my book, The Decision Maker's Handbook to Data Science. I'm more than happy to share a copy with you. I'm also very happy to help you out with topics like data strategy, etc. Just drop me an email, just contact me through the data scientist, and I'm more than happy to discuss your challenge and help you out. The rest of the report discusses about the set of practices that differentiate uh, the leaders in the use of AI against other companies. And uh, something which is clear is that in terms of strategy, uh, the companies that uh, go ahead of the competition, they have a clear roadmap for prioritizing AI initiatives linked to business value across organizations, and they have a clearly defined AI vision and strategy. And again, data strategy, data science strategy, data management, these are some of the things that I've been talking about all these years. And it's clear that while the companies that get this right, they get ahead of the competition, many companies still don't. That's why our job here is not done. We need to educate more and more business leaders on that. And I'm very happy for those of you who are listening to this podcast because you are definitely on the right place. Next point on this report is around managing AI risks. And many companies are not acknowledging most AI risks, maybe because they're still in the early cycle of AI adoption and they're probably going to realize some of the risks later on. And the thing with risks is that they are important, but if you take the right steps early on, they just stop being an issue, okay? And there is like cybersecurity, regulatory compliance, explainability. That's something very important for me, explainability and algorithm bias. A large part of my work has been around these themes. And this is where many companies are, are simply not getting it. And it might take some time until they take this more seriously, but hopefully we're gonna, we're gonna get there. Especially the point of explainability is very important when we see all these legal issues arousing around uh, algorithmic bias and how AI might be used in some cases and falsely discriminate against certain groups of people. And finally, the report closes discussing about COVID and the impact of COVID on technology and AI adoption. It's clear that COVID has sped up the adoption of AI. And something else which is very interesting is that in many cases, machine learning and AI models, they misbehaved during the COVID crisis, which is still going on, which, uh, I mean, this comes as no surprise since the, the, the underlying system that many of those models were modeling had simply shifted and changed and it's one of the reasons that you need to really take seriously topics such as machine learning auditing and algorithmic accountability and explainability and obviously this all ties in with data strategy and all the topics we discussed earlier so this was a very interesting report pleasure to read it and it really touches also upon many of the themes that my work touches upon if you're interested to discuss more about this report or AI in general, especially topics relating to data strategy, feel free to reach out to me at thedatascientist.com and I'll be more than happy to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com for more content about data science, AI, and blockchain.